this was one of the biggest challenges of my life to qualify for the World Championships in Las Vegas. I have two chances to do it in Austria 70.3 and in Wimbledon 70.3. I do want to get to the World Championships for my own reasons, but what I think is important is that your, your own reasons are for a greater good. I wouldn't really say that other triathletes inspire me as such. What they do is brilliant, but at the same time, I, I'm quite inspired by people that have, have done things selflessly in their lives. I'm working on a farm with horses and it's, it's really lovely to be able to train in the countryside. It's a nice atmosphere to be in because I have the gym quite close, I have my coach close. My first impression of Mark was um, one of uh, perhaps a, a very shy individual um, but also one very focused. It's a long journey, it's hard, it's not easy. If it was easy, we'd all be doing it. Mark's focus and his drive and humility will hold him in great stead. The first thing that went through my mind when I heard that Mark has signed up to this Iron Man was, he's crazy. Growing up with Mark was a challenge. Mark was always the kid who would get himself into a fighter school. He'd always be referred to as Mark's brother. Are you Mark's brother? We lived in a typical countryside type village where all the teenagers had very little to do and there was very little to entertain them. So as, as many youngsters do, Mark fell into that trap and got himself caught into a bit of a cycle where he didn't know how he was going to get out of that. And I think it all came together when he then ended up finding himself in a police cell. I remember in my uh, youth getting involved in a fight at a cider festival and being quite drunk and ending up in a prison cell that evening. And I remember feeling really ashamed of myself and so ashamed that I actually prayed to God for for forgiveness and help to do something better with my life. It really changed things around for me, that self-reflection that night. It was January 15, 2005. One of the guys who I worked with turned around and said that two kids had died in a crash. And then one of the waitresses mentions to me, they're your brother's friends, aren't they? Do you think your brother could have been there? And then during the last few hours of work, we started to hear, no, it wasn't just two, two people. There might have been a third person in, in that car as well. Three of my friends tragically dying in a car accident. And I remember not knowing what to do at the time. It hit home how close to a situation he really was and the fact that he was lucky that he wasn't in that car because by the sounds where he quite easily could have been. And I decided what I would do was set myself a big challenge to raise money for Memorial for my friends and the challenge was to run a half marathon in the Forest of Dean from Mitchell Dean, the, where I lived, to Breen. At that time, it was one of the biggest challenges because I wasn't very fit and I'd never run that kind of distance before. However, I did feel very determined that I was going to do it because of the reasons that I was running. But before the, the run to Bree, I was in a really low point and the only thing driving me was the fact that I felt that my three friends were looking down on me and that the money that would be raised would raise enough money to go towards a memorial. 
so they would be remembered for, for years to come. That's what kept my determination up. I actually wanted to get involved to make right to the world. Well, after I finished it, I thought I need to to start doing something positive with my life. So I wanted to start training to become an athlete. When I first signed up to do Ironman 70.3, I'd never done a triathlon before. I didn't even have a bike. I only had six months to prepare, so I had a lot to do. We met with a professional bike fitter called Ronan, who fitted me to a bike which he suggested. I realised I had more issues regarding flexibility. He guided me through some of the exercises I needed to do to be more effective on the bike. The next big challenge that I faced, I'd never swum in open water before. I booked a lesson with Richard Stannard, a, a top triathlete, to give me some confidence in the open water. I felt scared. I was quite worried about the cold sending my body into shock, the depth of the water and not knowing what was in the water. They were all things that, that really worried me and played on my mind quite a lot. I learned really to relax when I got in. It was all about a state of mind of relaxation and to calm down. Today, mate, today we're going to be doing a triathlon. Do you know what that means? It means we're going to be swimming, we're going to be cycling, and then we're going to be running. I went to do a three-quarter Olympic distance triathlon at Dorney Lake. It was the swim that was the scariest part for me because of my fear of open water and cold and just generally drowning. <laughs> So once the swim was over, I felt like, oh, I can complete this now. I finished 14th, which gave me a lot of confidence that I could do it. I looked online quickly with my best friend and uh, we saw that we could raise money for Shelterbox. Shelterbox is an international disaster relief charity. Um, we respond instantly to natural as well as man-made disasters, so earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanoes, flooding. Um, we provide boxes of aid. Uh, we specialise in emergency shelter, um, so we provide a family tent for up to 10 people, um, as well as other vital equipment for them to use while they're displaced or homeless. So for months leading up to that, my focus was to then help him raise his money and harass our family to sponsor him. Doing it for the charity actually gave me a lot of encouragement during my training and really helped me switch off to the pain because knowing that I was stopping someone else's pain in some small way really helped. One of the hardest things with the training is probably, it's not to me keeping motivated because I'm very motivated and I want to do it, but sometimes one of the hardest things for me is to try and switch off and uh, not train to repair properly. To work towards a goal and to really want something, it gives you a lot of strength in what you're doing and makes you feel very good. 
I think that's the main thing I've learned is to keep being determined. The morning of the Ironman felt really surreal, really exciting and really nerve-wracking. It was only when within the first 10 minutes you've seen two people come back with an asthma attack and hypothermia. At that point, it strikes you that like, this is a serious sport. Running up to the transition to change onto the bike, I did feel really tired, like I'd overexerted myself, but I found energy from somewhere. As I was going uphill, I was in too heavy a gear, so I switched down and I did it too quickly and the chain came off. I just feel so angry, so I keep struggling. I keep trying to get the chain off, no joy, it's well and truly stuck. I stop for a second to take a breath, shout a little bit, and I get back to the chain. I yanked it so hard, it somehow released, I got it back on, so I got back on my bike and kept on going. I finished the first lap, coming up for the second lap and I thought I can't make the same mistake again. Only this time, on a different hill, the chain came off again when I changed gear. It wasn't the end of the race for me because I'd done the event for charity, so there was no way I could not finish the race, get back on the bike, and get off the bike as soon as possible and start running. I couldn't feel my legs whatsoever, but I knew they were there somewhere, and I just kept running. Is in a lot of pain, but no more than what I'd expect to have been in. It felt really great, but at the same time, when I crossed the line, I felt a little bit disappointed because I'd gone through some troubles and I thought I could have done this faster. Once we discovered the full extent of the problems that he had on the bike course and how much time he'd lost through that in his age category, he comfortably would have finished within the time range that would have qualified him for World Championships. When we start up again, then you are ready to go Yeah? I decided what I would do would be that I would get myself a coach, I would train hard and be there next year to qualify for the World Championships. From a coaching point of view, it was great to get hold of him at a very early stage so he's still in one piece more or less um, and then we've got something to work with we had to slow him down before we could speed him up again uh, young fit strong equals burnout with somebody who's been going at 100 miles an hour for for the last six months to actually say you need to stop it's, it was very difficult to get it across very difficult for Mark to accept and very difficult to explain. Why, why, why is that going to make it faster? Mark is, is full of tension and I really try to get Mark to relax in the pool. Water is such a um, harsh environment to work in. It's many times denser than air. So it's something that you need to, uh, to work with, not against. Over the months of training, changed as a swimmer amazingly. Maybe some way to go, but this, he's immensely different. Um, and it's all to do with, with just being more relaxed. 
cycling's pretty good because of the how Mark can cope with the, with the pain and discomfort of cycling hard in a big gear then there's no reason why he won't be able to take that same suffering pain and be faster in a slightly lower gear which will give him a greater a greater chance of running off the bike it's great with the, the bullish attitude of just sitting in the gear and grind it out but when you want to run faster for 30 miles you need to uh, display some self control and hold back slightly running is brilliant he's fast he's tough but uh, I try to instill a, some form of uh, pace control which Mark found I think over the uh, over the months leading up to Ironman quite tough because he's got two speeds and one is stop and the other is flat out which is a fantastic trait and one that is if harnessed right is is will hold him in good stead. What I learned about myself after completing the Ironman 70.3 was that through my ability in athletics I could help people by fundraising but also by carrying a message in my heart. I'm competing in Ironman to uh, raise awareness of Transmission 610 which is a film. I watched the documentary and that was how I first learned about the persecution of Falun Gong in China. I couldn't understand how such a good thing can be persecuted. It's important for people to be aware of when when there's genocide happening in the world because if it's always a secret and nobody knows of it then it's not in people's minds and it seems to go on unnoticed and that's why it's so important to, to be aware of it and to, and to really be passionate about not letting it happen. When the idea first came to me that I could use the sport which I loved and my ability, it, it actually sent chills down my spine. The same feeling that I had the night when I realised my three friends had passed away after the car accident. I admire Mark for finding a deeper purpose to run, especially with his determination to see it right through to the end. As his brother, because I wanted to support him, I decided to use the skills which I had to try and generate a way to make it happen. What's it like being Mark's brother? We had our fights. It was when I started to see his real focus and determination that I started to realise no, he's, he's actually, he is my brother, but he's also capable of a lot more than I ever realised, that I thought I'll give him as much support as I can. I'd rather give him support and him fail, as opposed to not give him any support and not give him an opportunity to fail. First day in Austria here at the campsite. Had a lovely night's sleep in my big tent over there. Feeling good. Got up this morning, had a nice run, and now thinking better go and register and get ready for my race. The first thing which I need to do is to register and get my race pack. And then I take my kit bags and try and sort out what goes in which one. Representing Great Britain. 
So I take all my kit to the transition area. In the week leading up to the Austria Ironman, I started to realise just how hard it was going to be for Mark to qualify. Although I decided I wasn't going to let Mark know that I realised how tight it would be. On the race evening, it's quite wise to get straight to bed after some food. I have this dream where um, in the race, in the World Championships this year in Las Vegas, uh, break, break through the, the ribbon and all of a sudden, boom, my body just drops to the floor and I feel dead, weightless. When I woke up in the morning, I thought about the dream and I thought if that was the case, to raise awareness for people who are persecuted for what they believe in, in mainland China, it would be so worth it. Well, this is James hijacking Mark's video camera then, <laughs> and we're just about to wake him up. No, he's not in there. I wonder where he is. Is he warming up outside, maybe? The proper way an Iron, Iron Man warms up? Let me guess. Here we go, the car's going. So, is this how an Iron Man warms up, Mark? This is warming up this morning, stretching out. <laughs> Warming up, a couple of star lunges in the car. <laughs> what I'm thinking race morning is that I need to feel good, I need to feel warm, I need to really focus on what it is I have to do that day and check that all my kit is prepared and that I won't lose any time through lack of preparation. I need to really plan the whole race what's going to happen where. My age group was the second wave of triathletes to set off, so this was quite good in that there wasn't too many people ahead of me. When the horn went to start swimming, I got my head down and started to swim with the rest of the crowd. Shortly into the swim, I got hit in the face and my goggles came off and the other side of the goggle got stuck to my eye. It, rather than try to fiddle, I, I, I just kept on swimming and I followed the yellow hat around the lake and just tried to stay somewhere near the front and to try and guide my way through. I got out of the water feeling quite disorientated. I straight away stopped to, to sort my goggles out to try and see some sense through, through them. And then I ran as quickly as I could, which wasn't very quick after that swim, to the second lake and dived in and just really focused on getting round. I got out of the lake after swimming, feeling like as if I'd gone a bit too slow. So I really rushed as quickly as I could to get onto my bike and was in a little bit of a frenzy trying to catch up on lost time. I tried to follow how Mark was doing by getting myself to key vantage points where I knew I'd be able to spot him. I must have missed him coming out of the swim and got myself around to an area on the side of the course where I could try and follow him if he came past. I found out at the same time that there was a live tracking system, so at that point I realised I could follow him on my phone. Once I got on my bike and started pedalling, though, I slowly found that I could calm down and get into the race. Everyone in Austria was very fast because it's that kind of course. It, it kind of caters for the fast athlete and 
everyone there was there to do business, they were really serious. At that point I realised the swim wasn't great as far as I could see, but he was making a lot of time up in the cycle. But I didn't try to get any hopes up because I realised just how much time you need to make up and how quick the cycle was. It was uh, a personal best time actually over that distance. So I Getting off the bike and onto the run was quite stressful because I had put a lot of energy into the bike and my legs were a little bit um, in cycling mode and not in running mode. But I quickly got my trainers on and ran off and the pins and needles I had in my foot I could hardly feel my legs slowly started to ease off but it did take one whole lap of the two lap run course coming towards mile 12 in the run I really felt like I'd put um, a lot of effort into it. It was a hot day and I was really hoping to get to the finish as quickly as possible for it just to be time to just relax. During when I could tell how well he was doing because they do three laps of the same course. And as I saw him cross the finish line in just over five hours, at that point I realised it was probably highly unlikely he had qualified. I just crossed the finish line and I'm really relieved. I'm hoping that my time may be fast enough to qualify me, but I'm really relieved to have finished the race and to put everything into it. That evening I went to the race supper to wait for the roll down of athletes who had qualified for the World Championships or not, hoping that my name might get called, but kind of knowing that it might be down to the, the roll down rather than the time because there were so many fast athletes. My age group's roll down was the second to be called out and I quickly realised that I hadn't quite made it. I had one more chance to qualify for the World Championships this season and it was Wimbledon. just engaged into race mode so there was a lot of athletes in the water and all I could really see was splashing in the odd kind of dot leg foot elbows flying and feet bashing the long run up from the water to transition which is uh, up that big steep hill. I got out of the water feeling very numb from the cold but full of adrenaline so I just ran up to the transition tried to get my bearings back and got straight on my bike as quickly as I could. Getting onto the bike was a relief because then I knew that after the slow swim it was an opportunity to, to make up a lot of time. I knew that it would be strong for me. I was really cold and that 
I could hardly feel my feet. I kept on pedaling, really put everything into it. This was really the moment in which to qualify. I found James ahead of me in the pack and I remember seeing him and thinking, gosh, I need to speed up. When Mark came past, which was nice to see him come past, um, I was shocked it took him that long, I have to say. Spin, mate, spin. Spin out. Grinding that big gear up those big hills. The only thing I could think of, which is great for me because my legs stopped hurting at that point, was um, he's got to stop grinding those gears because he's got 13 miles to run when he gets off the bike. Come on. Spin it out. I found that this advice really helped. It was great having James there on the day for support and for him to see how seriously I took the race, for him to be walking the journey with me. But after I got to the top of that incline, I quickly put the gears back down again and got back into my own race and my own comfort zone of being in the hard gear. I'd hit it too hard on the pipe, maybe I'd been in the top gear for too long, my legs were quite fatigued and my knee was really hurting and my feet were still cold from the swim, I really didn't get the feeling back into my feet. The loneliness of the long distance happening, searching deep inside yourself to, to find the person within. In a competition you've got fatigue within that equation so your legs are tired the battle the mind wants to carry on and will carry on because you've trained the mind in in all of your months of training prior and the body is saying it's just you know it's getting too much now but your mind will push you through when you're in a lot of pain the thought which always occurs to me is that people in China are being persecuted and tortured to death and that the pain that I'm going through is temporary and voluntary so I'm actually quite fortunate to be enduring through it for them. Coming out to the cycle, I can see he's about 10 minutes behind where he needs to be. So I realise that going into a run, he has to be fast.
and it started to sink into me that I hadn't done enough this day, it hadn't been my best day and that the run was really tough and that it was all about completing the race now and not qualifying. What I've learned about myself through the past two years is that anything that you put your mind to is quite achievable and that as long as you stay determined and have the right reasons for doing things, you will keep that determination and you will achieve it. I felt that day was very emotionally draining, then realised the fact that he hadn't qualified and he was actually a little bit off where he needed to be. When he crossed the line, I felt quite gutted. I needed just to spend 20 minutes just off in my own space just to let the emotions out. In completing the race though, I knew that there was still a lot of purpose in that because I was running with this message on my chest. So it really, that pushed me to the finish line without feeling too negative about the fact that I'd been too slow and too bullish on the bike. Glorious thing, absolutely glorious thing. There's nothing better, no, I can't think of anything anyway, that's, that, that tops the feeling of uh, coming to the finishing shoot of a, of a major competition like that. It's the noise, the atmosphere, the self, um, or the, just the pride that in yourself is incredible. You know, I've done that. Doesn't matter what the time is, whether you've come first or last, you, you're still a, an achiever. It's a massive, massive achievement. No matter what the result was in the two Ironman events, I still felt like a winner. And I still felt like there was next year to try and qualify again. I still felt really lucky that I was able to run for such a great course and with such a great purpose, which really pushed me on. It gave me a greater purpose and a reason to compete, a greater purpose in life in fact. <laughs>